Hey everyone, me Kevin here. In this video, we're going to talk about what just was said by our Federal Reserve Chairperson Jerome Powell in Congress. We expect similar testimony tomorrow, but we got a lot of good insight out of what Jerome Powell said, and I'm excited to bring it to you. First, a couple notes. We did get Eurozone inflation this morning that came in at 5.8% versus 5.4% that was expected. That means slightly hotter than expected inflation. Uh, that's in the Eurozone. Now, we did also get the ADP jobs report this morning. The ADP jobs report also came in higher than expected at 475,000 jobs versus 375 expected. But not only this, they also revised up their jobs from around negative 301,000 last month to positive 509,000. So this uh, private jobs report really showed us that uh, the labor market is absolutely crushing it. The real space that got hit the hardest in that private jobs report was in the small businesses sector. They lost jobs, whereas big businesses, especially service and retail, they really gained a lot of jobs. My assumption for this, and it's completely an assumption, is that as the stock market falls, small businesses who more often fund their businesses with their wealth, their personal wealth, stop hiring or lay off people when the stock market falls. I believe that's more true of small businesses than larger businesses, which can be more resilient to these sorts of shocks. Now, let's talk about j -Pow. And remember that this video is brought to you by Extra. Go to metkevin.com slash extra to learn more about building your credit without a credit card, using the extra debit card. All right, so good news. The good news is Jay Powell, for the first time since January just spoke, and uh, he told us that he supports a 25 basis point liftoff. This is what the market has been expecting. It's what the market has been pricing in. Now, he did indicate that he expects there to be a series of increases afterwards, but he didn't know exactly how many yet. However, he gave us a really big hint. And I think most mainstream media miss this. He says, this liftoff and tightening cycle will probably be much more like the tightening cycle of the beginning of the century, not the tightening cycle after the great financial crisis. Okay, so there are two tightening cycles that happened this, this century, one before the Great Recession and one after. The one after happened in uh, or started in 2011, and we had these slow 25 basis point hikes after about a three quarters initial hike, and then these slow hikes. The one he's referring to now, though, was, a, uh, was in 2004, where they did have a 50 basis point bump, and then 17 consistent 25 basis point hikes. So about every six to seven weeks, they hiked rates 25 basis points. And the purpose of that is to constrain the real estate and housing market, which he says is hot and needs to cool down. It's to constrain auto lending and ultimately constrain demand. And when we constrain demand, then we can push inflation down. So he made it very clear that, and the, the one part here is good news, he doesn't plan to rug pull us, but don't expect the Fed to be nice to us for the next probably two years. They're just going to hike and hike and hike and hike and hike continuously, potentially uh, if, if the reference is true to early 2004 or mid-2004 when they were hiking, that started a 17 hike process, which is wild. Right now, the market's pricing in maybe five or six uh, before we start seeing potentially a pause. So uh, a little bit of a disparity there between the market and Powell. Uh, he did talk about, and this was quite interesting as well, how when it comes to oil, the, the question was, will inflation uh, lead to, or will we have sort of a spiral of inflation because of higher energy costs? And he says that Oil prices going up do create a price level change, but they don't create a repeated change. So in other words, you don't tend to get this cycle of up, 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 up uh, of the inflation impact when energy costs go up. Yes, you will see one time larger hikes uh, in inflation. And uh, in, when he was asked about the, uh, things like the Keystone Pipeline, he refused to talk about specific policy, but he did say, hey, look, the laws of supply and demand work. In other words, if we have more supply of oil, yeah, the cost of oil, gas, uh, gas and oil will go down in the United States. He did talk about how over the last 25 years, we've seen essentially negative inflation for most goods, and that it's only been recently here because of the shocks, the supply side shocks, and really the, the demand side shocks that we've seen, that inflation is as high uh, as it is. Now, in terms of March, again, he does expect to lift off. He does expect to proceed very carefully. And the reason he expects to proceed more carefully and the reason he doesn't want to create any kind of shock in the market, and this is very important, we don't want to see a rug pull, uh, is because of war. 
In fact, he went as far as saying, hey, look, at first they pivoted because of the high inflation, but they're now essentially softening their pivot. And in Jerome Powell's words, quote, the war is, quote, a game changer to their trajectory. Now, this is literally how I felt. I U-turned and sold a lot of stocks in January when the Federal Reserve turned hawkish because I thought they were going to rug pull us. As soon as we had the invasion, I bought the dip like crazy. You look at the chart of last Thursday where some of those prices were, that's where I did most of my buying, but I'm still only 50-50 in the market. I haven't flipped out of any positions that I've bought except for gold, but that was more of a shorter term trade or some of the other shorter term trades that I do when sort of volatility goes up or down, I'll play volatility and swing trade that. But beyond that, the larger portion of my positions right now is 50-50 and it really aligns a lot and I'm happy to hear this from Powell that we kind of both feel the same way. That at first it felt like, uh-oh, rug pull, necessary. Now the war is a game changer and we just don't know what the outcomes of this are going to be. But Powell makes it very clear, quote, we do not want to add uncertainty. And so he's actually being very clear with us right now. He's telling us he supports a 25 basis point hike and he supports a tightening cycle like what we saw in 2004, where it was 17 hikes in a row. Uh, and ultimately, that is designed to bring down inflation, which he does expect inflation to peak this year. He also tells us that uh, his actions are, uh, they affect demand. They don't affect supply. So there's nothing he could do to fix supply chains, although he does expect them to get you know, improve or see improvement this year, uh, there's nothing they can do directly to affect supply. It's not like the Fed can build more factories. That would be up to Congress, he says. Uh, he does say, though, that uh, before the Ukraine situation, uh, and, and the crisis in Ukraine, they were expecting to raise policy rates, uh, probably more substantially than expected, uh, and they expected to work on uh, reducing the balance sheet. However, now they are, and I'm reiterating this, they are, quote, proceeding more carefully because there are too many unknowns. This is exactly what we expected, that the Fed would turn dovish because of war. This is why I bought, and this, in my opinion, is why it makes sense to be 50% in the market. However, personally, I still think we've got massive massive headwinds in terms of how long are we going to be going with these rate hike cycles and how is that actually going to affect company earnings. I don't think we're going to see the amazing earnings reports that we saw from Q4 again in Q1, Q2 and onward. Now, uh, Jerome Powell again reiterates that he expects inflation to moderate. Uh, he uh, did respond to credibility, his question, the question of credibility uh, and, and the Federal Reserve. He says that, look, we are responding to inflation the way we should. In the 70s and 80s, which is exactly what we're trying to avoid, having the Volcker of the market, the Fed did not respond appropriately to inflation. And that was their fault. However, we're not making that same mistake today. The Fed was slow back then. Today, inflation expectations are anchored. Back then, they were unanchored. I really appreciated him making this comparison to the 70s and 80s because that is also a big fear of mine, is that the Fed is going to have to sort of pseudo Volcker us, which is basically just rug pull us, raise rates a bunch really fast, force a recession, and crush this economy. Uh, which would be bad, but it would kill inflation. He says because inflation expectations are anchored and because every time they talk about their policy actions, the market starts pricing them in, that maybe we don't have to worry as much right now about inflation becoming unanchored and that we're in a better place today than, uh, than we were in the 70s or 80s. And we should be less concerned, though still vigilant. I really appreciate him saying that. Now, uh, he does respond to, can we control inflation without a recession? And he believes that we actually can achieve a soft landing. He actually thinks it's more likely that we are going to achieve a soft landing than not. Now, of course, this is what we were told in 2006 as well, and we all, saw, we, we all know what happened after that. But I'm kind of inclined to agree with him, especially now because of the uncertainties of war. Watch my war video yesterday where it doesn't make sense for the Fed to rug pull us in a time of war where war is likely to push aggregate demand down because it could lead to a stagflationary crisis where the Fed loses on both ends, inflation and employment. Right now they're winning on employment, but they're losing on inflation. And so they don't want to overly hawk and then kill both. Now, uh, he was asked about Biden's suggestion that companies are just being greedy and that companies should stop raising prices. This is something that Biden mentioned during his State of the Union address yesterday. And Powell played this like a game of 4D chess. He 
purposefully didn't watch the State of the Union. So that way he could just respond and say, oh, I didn't watch it, I don't know. But hey, back when I was uh, you know, in the business world, uh, let's just say companies are constantly managing their costs and therefore their prices. And in other words, he's saying, look, as companies have their input costs go up, they're going to raise prices. So it might be less of a matter of corporate greed and more of a matter of, dude, prices are going up. So they're gonna try to do whatever they can to preserve their existence as a business. Now, uh, about the labor market, he reiterates how tight it is and mentions that it's the bottom quartile that's seeing most of the wage gains right now, not so much the top 75%. That it's the low wage earners, that those are the ones who are seeing the big wage increases, probably in retail and services, and that the higher wage earners are actually not seeing as much. Now, uh, in terms of housing, he does say, yeah, we, look, we've got high housing prices. Why? A lot of demand, lack of workers, lack of legal immigration, way lower legal immigration than we've had before, very low rates, low availability. However, he does believe that housing is, quote, very interest rate sensitive and that as rates go up, the housing market, quote, will cool. Uh, and this is, of course, expected. Uh, there was a brief mention here regarding housing that there could be some risks in areas like Florida, where Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac are starting to get nervous that people might not be able to repay their 30-year mortgages as sea levels start to rise in Florida. Uh, he didn't. Uh, Jerome Powell himself didn't have too much to say on this, other than, yeah, I mean, the government's probably going to end up uh, footing a lot of the bill for that. On stable coins, Jerome Powell mentioned that they're working on both the technical and policy aspect of this. And their goal is to come up with something that is fair and honest, but it is a good sign that stable coins are pegging to the dollar and not to other currencies. However, he does call for substantial regulatory oversight. For example, right now, Binance, we know, has refused to block Russians from being able to buy into cryptocurrencies. And we did recently think that cryptocurrencies were pushed up essentially in pricing because of the action of uh, individuals in Ukraine and Russia buying uh, cryptocurrencies. However, it now appears the data is coming out suggesting we actually experienced a little bit more of a short squeeze uh, on, uh, on Monday when Bitcoin, for example, hit 39 and 40, saw a little bit of some short liquidations that pushed us back to about 44. Uh, however, on CBDCs, they're still working on it. They do believe that existing digital, digital currencies, excuse me, are mostly speculation and not a story of value. Uh, now, I do want to give another quick shout out uh, before I finish this up here to uh, extra Obviously, that the dollar could get displaced, but does not believe that this is a big issue right now because inflation is being experienced throughout the world. And it's not just the dollar essentially losing its value. He does believe that there will be some unintended consequences from the swift banking system that is Russia being kicked from it. Certainly, we're seeing issues with commodity prices like palladium, corn, neon, wheat, all of these things skyrocketing. But he doesn't believe that money market Markets are going to have issues because Russia is not a part of it. Uh, he does not see any notable cyber attacks yet, though cyber attacks are a big concern of his. And uh, ultimately, Powell really believes that uh, that we need to approach this market with care and caution, and that the worst thing to do right now is rug pull the market. And the big reason for that was war. That war was the, in Jerome Powell's words, game changer as to why essentially they can't rug pull the market, that they have to take it slow and easy now. And folks, this is exactly how we expected Jerome Powell would respond. This is exactly what I've been saying on my channel for the last really two months here. And folks, I'm investing as such. So if you want to see all of my trades, remember to check out the programs linked down below so that way you know where I'm investing and where I'm not. And folks, as usual, We'll see you in the next one. Thanks so much for being here. Goodbye.